Hey there LEGO fans and welcome back. Alex here. In this video we are going to be doing a review and a placement of the new LEGO modular and here it is guys. This is the Natural History Museum set number 10326. Contains 4,014 pieces making it officially the largest modular to date. Just by 12 pieces though over Assembly Square. This will retail for 300 US dollars and will be available to purchase as of December 1st. Yes, you heard me right. A December 1st release date for this. We haven't seen a modular release on a date other than January 1st since Parisian Restaurant back in 2014. So it seems LEGO is trying to ride the holiday wave this year by not waiting until January 1st. But you know what? I still consider this thing to be the 2024 modular. So lots to talk about. So let's get right into this thing, shall we? There is one instruction book and it is thick. There's some information on the designer and the museum and then it's right into the build. There was no page showing the stages of the build and number of build sections, but I counted them for you and there are 33. Lego did include several short informational bits throughout the instructions, most of them having something to do with the exhibits. I always enjoy reading these and glad they included them. There are seven minifigures in this set, which is a very disappointing number given the size and price point of this set. I really feel that the biggest modular should also lead in this category as well. So Assembly Square will continue to hold the top spot at nine minifigures, though I do need to point out that there are two statues displayed at the front of the museum and these can easily count as minifigures. So what do you guys think? Do we count them two and make the total nine? As for the seven main minifigures, we get two museum workers with matching attire, as well as the museum curator who acts as the tour guide. There is a note that implies that this is Dr. Cyber from the Time Cruisers theme from 1996. If that is him, he has aged gracefully over the decades. We get a window cleaner, which most of these modulars do include a janitor of some type. We haven't had a window cleaner since Grand Emporium though. There's an older lady who sits on a bench in front of the museum who enjoys feeding birds. And finally, we have what I would assume is a mother and son who are visiting the museum. The mother includes a prosthetic leg. All of the minifigures with the exception of the window cleaner have reversible faces. We have the normal face and then there are the more expressive faces. I am sure these alternative faces work very well in a place such as a museum. And finally, we also get a French bulldog who finds an unusually large bone. I hope this didn't belong to an exhibit. So what about the build? The build experience with this thing was excellent. I built this thing so fast. It was so fun, guys. It was an interesting build. It, it never got tedious and it had a good flow throughout. As for the color, I thought the olive green was an interesting choice for this build. I figured we would see a light or dark tan color for the facade, but I think this color fits the vibe of a museum very well. As with all modulars, the front is where this thing is gonna shine. It has a very commanding appearance. It reminds me a lot of Town Hall with those amazing white pillars common in classical architecture. There are two statues out front as stated earlier, and I want to say that the male figure could be Galileo, but that's just what I think. They likely don't represent any real person. There are some plants and flowers along the front as well as this cherry blossom tree. Now, I don't like the fact that this tree seemingly blocks a large portion of the building. My wife overheard me make that gripe and quickly pointed out that pink is the opposite or complementary color of that of the building. And as usual, she was right. Nice one, hon. I really like the look of this iron rod fence here along the front. They could have easily given us those large fence elements, so I'm really happy they didn't cheap out on us here. There are two banners that hang over the top floor windows to advertise current exhibits. These are thin plastic banners that LEGO has not used very often. I do worry about these cracking with age though. You can remove them easy enough if you'd like. In fact, here's what the front looks like without all of the added details. I also want to add that there are no stickers. Always a plus. The back of the museum will not turn any heads. There are two things to note though. One thing is that there is a decent effort to make a nice look around the back door. However, there was more than a little effort given to this water drain that offers some life-sustaining support for this small flower growing from a crack in the ground. And to top it off, we have the roof. This has got to be the best looking roof of the series. In fact, this is the best looking roof of any Lego set I have ever seen. This was a hidden gem for me. I think the designers did an amazing job with this. I especially love these massive skylights that allow a lot of natural light into the museum. All in all, 
a very solid exterior with a lot of great architectural details and clever build techniques used throughout that we've come to expect from the modular series. Now, let's take a look inside. As we enter the main doors of the museum, we immediately see what is always in every museum, and that is the gift shop. Museum goers are sure to find something they like here. The wall behind the counter can be removed to allow better access to the bathroom and office behind it. We see a microscope and petri dish there, and of course the bathroom, which is actually just a toilet. There's no sink, but they do give us some extra toilet paper rolls, so I guess that's good. Moving to the right, we step into the prehistoric exhibit. The main feature here is this massive skeleton of a Brachiosaurus. Lucky for us, this can easily be removed for a better look. In fact, pretty much all the exhibits can be removed so we can show them off to our human friends. Also in this wing are some dinosaur eggs, a saber-toothed tiger skull, and yes, we have some prehistoric poop on display. Very nice. On the other side of the museum, we have some pottery on display. These are supposed to be creations from the lady who lives upstairs in the Parisian modular. But bad news, looks like someone accidentally knocked one over and it now lies in pieces on the floor. I hope that wasn't expensive. One of my favorite spots in the museum is represented here, and it's a little hard to see, but it's right here in the back. It is a bench where we can sit down and take a break. Now, next to the bench, it is kind of hard to see, but there is a hole in the corner, and inside is a cheese wedge. Once this cheese wedge is placed, it is immediately covered, never to be seen again. No mouse comes with the set, so I guess the mouse that comes with Green Grocer might visit here every now and then. We then go up these two steps to see the rock exhibits. We have some crystals, geos, and a good old fashioned volcano. Before we move to the second floor though, I do want to mention the tiling that makes up the floor. I think the light tan and nougat color here are a good choice, as well as the decision to create different levels throughout the main floor. It really helps separate the different spaces in the absence of a wall. To access the second floor, we use these stairs. These are made from roof elements, and when adjusted to a 45 degree angle, they make pretty good looking steps. The second level has emphasis on space travel. Our solar system takes center stage here on this level. I think the designers had a fun time deciding what should be on display. There's a clever moon scene with micro builds that I believe are the Galaxy Explorer, Space Command Center, and Space Buggy. These are all sets from the classic space collection from 1979. On the other side, we have detailed exhibits celebrating key eras in LEGO minifigure history. I think most LEGO fans can figure this one out pretty quick. The build contains these two atriums under the massive skylights. These are done very well and also allow for a top-down view of that massive Brachiosaurus skeleton, among other exhibits on the first level. This upper level also allows our minifigures to get a face-to-face -face view of our late Jurassic friend. There is another stairway up to the roof, but access is denied to museum visitors, but not to our friend Dr. Cyber. There is a door at the top of the stairs, but it is positioned horizontally as to keep the aesthetic of the roof. I will say, once you're on the roof, it's a bit sketchy. There are no railings here to hold on to. There is just enough space to walk along the back where a telescope is set up to do some stargazing. But still, I really think we need some railings here. Safety should be first, not last. And finally, here at the very top and center, we have Dr. Cyber's office. We can remove this section of wall to get a better look inside. This office looks cozy and appears to be a place where one can enjoy some solidarity and create some award-winning research papers. So that is a look at the new LEGO Modular. A big thank you to the LEGO Group for providing this early copy for review. Now, before I take this thing downstairs, I do want to address the price tag because I do want to make my recommendation, and that is, would I buy this thing for $300 if it's my own money? Now, I want to tell you guys, I'm still struggling to wrap my head around these price increases that we saw a little over a year or so ago. And I guess we could say that because we have Assembly Square still available to purchase, that is a $300 modular. It's very close, very close actually, with piece count and size with this modular. So that being the case, I think the pricing is right when you compare it to that modular. However, in my own experience with this thing that I've had it for the short time, I would say this is a $270 Lego set, and that is with price increases in my mind. So that being the case, if you're not a super fan of the modulars and you don't need to have it day one, I recommend waiting until there's double VIP points or perhaps a gift with purchase that is something that you really like. I think that would make this purchase worth it for you. But in any case, this is an impressive and worthy entry into the modular 
modular series. Very excited to have this thing in the collection. So let's go ahead and take this thing downstairs and see how it looks in the city. We have made our way downstairs. The new modular is, no, it's not down there. Of course, it's gonna be downtown, right there. Not only is it downtown, but I gave it a very visible spot right next door to Town Hall Modular, which is the tallest modular uh, in the series. So that being the case, you can really see that height difference between the two. Wow, it is impressive. Uh, but regardless, it's still a great looking modular. In fact, let me back up here a little bit kind of see it all kind of together. It almost gets a little lost among all the other modulars around it. However, I think those massive white pillars really make it stick out, right? Man, that's impressive. Made a lot of changes to other modulars around it. Obviously, uh, what was there before was the assembly square modular. I ended up putting that back in the back row there, right next door to the uh, Parisian restaurant. Uh, that was my original plan, was to put it back there, but I just didn't like how it would be way back there and hidden. I mean, you can see how it's kind of not really visible unless you see it at a certain angle. Uh, but yeah, I made a lot of other changes around it. Got a, a rid of a lot of the uh, the old type of greenery right here and replaced it with uh, more modern elements for the flowers. Uh, so that was a big change. I was on my hands and knees on this table for a while. Oh my goodness, I'm paying for it right now. I am hurting, but it's worth it because it looks fantastic. In any case, guys, that is the review and placement of the new modular, the Natural History Museum. Let me know what you guys think of this modular by leaving a comment in the comment section below. And as always, you guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.